Well, hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the new engine uh, for the Halcyon 450. Uh, this is a, a topic that we're, I've been really looking forward to, 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 to covering. Um, and if you haven't seen it already, we have a series of two blog, two part blog posts featuring a lot of detail about the history and reasons for choosing this engine, um, the background of the engine, and more information on the EPA testing process and how we, how we have brought this bike uh, to the states. But in this video, I just wanted to uh, cover the, the basics of why we chose the engine and a little bit more, a little bit about the history and what you should know and expect uh, in the Halcyon 450. Uh, when we decided that we wanted to uh, increase, to, to offer a, a middle weight, let's just say, uh, model line, we did not know uh, what kind of horsepower we were looking for exactly. We didn't know, uh, really, we had, we, that was a pretty blank slate in terms of what we wanted. But after uh, doing some surveys with our owner group um, and talking to a lot of owners uh, for, for a number of years actually, uh, we, we kind of knew some rough criteria that we were looking for in, a, in, a, in a, what we called the middleweight model. And we kind of decided on was around, we wanted it to be able to get on the highway and not struggle to keep up with traffic. Uh, the Halcyon uh, 250, well, all of our 250 line tops at about 70 miles an hour, um, you know, wide open throttle uh, without, a t without a headwind. Um, and that's great. I've ridden cross country on, on Interstate 80, and uh, you, can, you can do it. It's fine, um, but you certainly don't have any room to pass anybody, and you're typically the one being passed by other folks. We did hear from our owners that along with additional comfort, uh, just a little more get up and go was something that they were, would, would love to see on another model. So that kind of had us thinking, well, what, what speed, what is the minimum speed we'd like this to go? And the number we settled on was about 85 miles per hour, which, you know, a, a solid 85 miles an hour, um, which is really a great speed to allow you to be able to get on the interstate if you need to. Either if you're wanted to, to go on a long distance trip, which certainly these aren't designed for, you know, motorcycle touring by any means. Or if, let's say you live in LA and you want to, you have to hop on the highway to get from one, uh, from work to, to home, et cetera. So just an engine with a little bit more of a, of a range of capabilities, but still absolutely true to our original kind of heritage of a lightweight, approachable, and, and, and small displacement engine. Um, this, we did not want to go, you know, every, the, the most common thing we hear is, you know, well, I'll buy one when you, when you get a 1200. Well, if you want a 1200, there are plenty of people that, <laughs> plenty of manufacturers that offer that. Um, our thing and, and what we enjoy and what our owners enjoy is a, a approachable, lightweight uh, motorcycle that's it's a, you know, easy, to, easy, to, easy to ride, not a whole or a big deal. So that, that was kind of the, 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 the parameter in terms of what it was capable of that we were looking for. Other, other factors that we knew would be important were the aesthetics. We want a beautiful engine. We don't want something that's um, you know, a water-cooled jacket designed to be covered up with plastic. So that meant we probably were looking for a, an air-cooled engine with big cooling fins, uh, something that would really match the, the aesthetics that we, that we work so hard to, to, to build and, and to, um, and to uh, design our bikes around. Along with the aesthetics of the engine, um, one of the things that I really wanted to ensure was that after having gone through emissions certification um, on the 250 line, uh, you know, it, it's very rare that uh, modern motorcycles are carbureted anymore, and getting, getting those through EPA can be a real challenge, as we know now with the 250. So I was really interested in a fuel-injected system. Um, there's a lot of benefits to both. Uh, carburation is, is a wonderful, simple, uh, easy to fix, it may be a little higher maintenance in terms of just making sure that you're draining your you know, carb cleaning, stuff like that's necessary. Um, you have to operate the choke, stuff like that. Um, but but uh, it's, it's, it's a great system because it is so maintain, uh, serviceable. Um, on the other side, fuel injection just offers uh, a, a lot of benefits, uh, especially as we increase power 
and still want to get through EPA and, and California ARB certification. Um, it was just going to make that process a lot easier, as well as um, making the startup process easier. We also really wanted an engine that, like our Bulletproof 250, had a, a long production history and uh, uh, a long history of reliability and ease of maintenance. Um, as, as you know, with our 250 line, uh, we don't have an a extensive dealer network. And so we, want, we need an engine that is, and we, we, it's part of our, our uh, brand that we want an engine that is serviceable by the owner or by any uh, small repair shop. Um, no, no, no factory tools aren't necessary. Um, a simple engine that uh, is easy to, easy to work on and very reliable. So that, that set of criteria, as you can imagine, kind of narrowed down our search. However, we finally uh, started seeing uh, stuff about this company called SWM Motorcycles that was supplying some English motorcycle brands with engines. And it, it, it piqued our interest. And especially when we noticed that they had a uh, classic line of motorcycles that featured a 445cc single cylinder uh, engine that looked quite the part uh, and fit a lot of uh, those criteria that we just mentioned. And that uh, SWM uh, is an Italian brand that uh, has a, a, actually a, a really neat history. Um, they were founded in the early 70s by two uh, off-road riders uh, and they started off by uh, building um, off-road and trials motorcycles with uh, engines from like, like we do, well, with engines from, from the outsource. So they started with SOX engines, uh, two strokes, and then moved to uh, also two stroke uh, Rotax engines uh, for their, for their uh, motorcycles, which were very competitive. Um, they won uh, a lot of um, uh, competitions in the 70s and early 80s. However, they unfortunately went into business in the uh, mid 80s. That was, you know, people thought maybe that was the end for SWM. However, in 2014, the brand was revived by uh, the ex-Husqvarna engineer um, who had helped develop uh, engines for Aprilia, Kajiva, uh, and Husqvarna. Uh, and the story there is that uh, uh, BMW at that, uh, in the early teens owned uh, Husqvarna, and the Husqvarna plant was actually in northern Italy. And uh, when BMW decided to sell the Husqvarna brand to KTM, KTM in turn said, well, we're gonna, we don't want to have a separate production facility. We're going to rebrand our KTMs as Husqvarnas. And so they really had no need for all this um, technology and um, a factory in northern Italy. So uh, Ampelio Maki was the engineer, and he decided to purchase uh, the factory and the uh, intellectual property that he had helped develop for Husqvarna. Um, and he did so with funding from uh, Shine Ray Group, which is one of the big four Chinese transportation giants. Um, and uh, he uh, set, set out to uh, m manufacture, again, off-road and uh, motorcycles, uh, f mainly for the European market. However, uh, th those, were, those were all using the uh, Husqvarna engines, uh, uh, liquid-cooled fuel injected engines. However, they also decided to launch a, what they call their classic line uh, of motorcycles. And those, unlike the other bikes, did not feature Husqvarna engines. They uh, used a Honda-derived engine, which is based on the Honda XR400. Um, and uh, the story there is that Shine Ray Group, the Chinese manufacturer, uh, that uh, uh, in, who invested in SWM had been manufacturing parts and engines uh, for Honda for many many years, and they were already making a uh, version of the XR400 engine um, at the time. And so SWM redesigned that XR400 platform uh, using a lot of their technology that they gathered with uh, from their Husqvarna years and increased the displacement to 445 cc's, added oil cooling for the increased power, um, 
and did a number of internal, I think primarily working with the oil system uh, upgrades to the engine. And uh, ShineRay uh, now manufactures that engine for SWM. So it's, it is manufactured in China and imported uh, by SWM, SWM into Italy. And uh, it really did seem like one of the few great options that would fit the bill that we had uh, kind of set up for ourselves. Um, and so the next step was to, uh, to uh, go visit. So in the spring of 2019, I went over uh, to Milan and uh, drove the uh, 45 minutes up to Biondrono, where the SWM factory is. It's on a little lake uh, right across the lake from the old um, uh, Kajiva plant, now the MV Agusta plant. So right in the heart of Italian motorcycle manufacturing, not far from uh, Varese, which is another uh, seat of um, Italian motorcycle manufacturing. And got to meet their uh, head of international sales, tour the factory, got to see the design studios and the uh, manufacturing uh, where they're putting together the bikes and the engines and kind of set up, basically set up a relationship with SWM and just kind of you know, do our due diligence and research on this engine. And, and just, I was uh, really uh, overwhelmed with the, the funding that they had and the, the uh, just seemed like a really uh, um, reliable and uh, viable option for us for the future. And the next thing we did was to um, apply for an EPA variance to be able to start importing a limited number of these engines for EPA testing. Uh, what we decided to do to expedite the EPA testing process and our ability to bring this product to market was to, to basically start testing while we were developing the bike because we knew that it, it, this motor meets Euro 5 standards, which are actually different, but in some ways more stringent than US EPA standards and California CARB standards. We knew we could pass, especially with fuel injection, but we wanted to get a head start on developing the model. So what we ended up doing was putting the 450 in a 250 chassis um, we called it the Franken 450 and sent that off to our friends uh, up at SNS Cycle in Wisconsin, who we've gone through EPA testing on the 250 with. Um, it's a pleasure to work with them as always. And we're able to field a uh, test bike uh, relatively quickly that way and expedite the process. We were really pleased uh, when uh, on our first, what we call the zero mile test, uh, we, uh, the results were that without a catalyst, and with almost no modifications, uh, we actually passed the EPA and CARB uh, baseline emissions test. Now we were a little bit close to the, the limit, so that, that was without a catalyst. So we decided to add the catalyst just as a factor of safety and begin the full uh, 15,000 mile emissions test sequence uh, duration miles. Meanwhile, we were developing the chassis. So that's kind of the, the story of, of, of the um, certification of it. Um, and, and next up, uh, I'd like to talk just a little bit about the actual history of this engine going back all the way to the, the late 70s. So as I mentioned, this is the, based on the, X, the Honda XR400, which is a, uh, an engine that the XR line started in the late 70s um, with, a, with a Honda's basically an, an enduro style motorcycle. So this is in contrast to their CR line, which is their competition motocross line. Higher horsepower, long, lower service life, measured in hours, not years or, or miles. Um, so this is not, this was not ever designed by Honda to be this like competition high performance engine. Perfectly for us. This is designed as a lower horsepower, reliable kind of enduro trail bike. It wasn't until the uh, 1983 that Honda launched to the public the XR350 and the XR500. Uh, the XR500 actually won the Paris Dakar Rally in 1982. Um, so it does have a little bit of a, of, of a competition history there. Um, but again, um, while it has been raced in motocross, it's more of a reliable, low maintenance engine. That 1983 uh, XR350 and 500 both featured Honda's new uh, RFVC uh, cylinder. Uh, design, which stands for radial four valve combustion chamber. Um, and, and, and very uh, brief description of that is it essentially means that it is a hemispherical combustion chamber. So it is a, actually a hemi, <laughs> it's a shallow hemisphere. So the, it's a dome shape rather than a pent roof uh, 
combustion chamber like many engines. That means that each valve coming into the, the engine comes in on a different plane uh, as opposed to the, the intake and exhaust valves being sharing, um, sharing a plane, forming a kind of a pitched roof. And then it wasn't until another 10 years that Honda launched the, what, the XR400. So they had been making that 350 and 500 um, and they ran into some issues with overheating and they weren't quite po as powerful as they wanted them to be. So they moved to from the uh, wet sump design that the original 350 and 500 had, which means all the oil is in a bath at the bottom of the transmission case. So all the oil has to be housed in the engine. Um, that's like our 250. It's like many bikes to this day use a wet sump system, um, but they moved to a dry sump system, which means that the oil is housed in a reservoir external to the engine. The benefits of this are uh, uh, you can put as much oil in that reservoir as the, as the reservoir is big, which increases your service intervals um, and allows you to uh, just a, a, more, a, a more reliable uh, and a higher performing engine. So they moved to that and the XR400 then went on in production, I think until uh, the early 2000s, 2004 is when Honda ceased production with that, but it, it earned a reputation for a, one of the most reliable enduro motorcycles ever made. And so that right there fit our criteria of a long production history, reliable, easy to maintain. Um, and it's a Honda, so every, most little shops know how to work on it with a blindfold, just like the 250. Interestingly, the XR650, which is just the same engine, a little bigger, uh, is still in production. 2022, they're still selling, Honda is still selling the XR650. And once again, it has a reputation for being extremely reliable. So um, that, that, that's kind of a, a brief history of the XR line. And I hope from that you can understand why this was a great choice for us in terms of finding another, another engine to fit the, the, the Janus model line that is uh, low maintenance, reliable, and, um, and fun and, uh, and, and pretty good looking. We're, we're really proud of the way this engine looks. Other models that Honda uh, supplied with this engine include the XBR 500, the GB 500, which if you're not familiar with it, is a really neat uh, kind of cafe racer uh, bike. It was only available in the States in 1989. Beautiful motorcycle that you can tell that they were taking advantage of the aesthetics of this engine when they, when they used it. Um, and then also the uh, FT500 or the Honda Ascot 500, the single cylinder version of that model, which is a wonderful bike, kind of flat track inspired from Honda in the uh, 80s, actually found on uh, a lot of vintage racing tracks uh, today. So those are some uh, other bikes that Honda used this engine in. So we really feel like we've been able to uh, fill, fulfill all the uh, criteria that we initially uh, set for ourselves in terms of a low maintenance, highway capable, approachable, storied engine uh, with an electronic fuel injection system, um, all those aspects uh, taken into account. Uh, and uh, with all the uh, test miles we've put on it uh, over the last year, uh, it's really, uh, um, it's proven itself to be um, exactly what we had hoped for. Uh, and we really are excited. We think that this is a, a fantastic model to add to the fleet. It, it, uh, it by no means supersedes the 250. The 250 almost has more of a place now. Um, they, they, they fit different, different functions. So uh, uh, I still ride a 250. <laughs> I love the, the, the around town, uh, the, the lightweight ease of, of use. Um, but uh, I can easily see a place uh, for the 450 if you want to get on the highway. I can't wait to put some longer mile, mileage trips um, down with the 450. So we're very pleased with it. And we really look forward to hearing uh, your all's feedback. There are more and more 450s going out to customers every day. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to this riding season and seeing more and more of these out on the road. If you have any questions on the, uh, on the 450 engine or anything that I've talked about so far, please get a hold of us. Um, and remember, uh, for more detail on uh, the engine and the story, check out our two-part blog post on the 450 engine. Thanks so much for watching and catch you with the next video.